Jim Gallagher uh, asked us asked me a question about uh, when I got started calling and tracking, putting the two together. And uh, I got started just tracking when I uh, wanted to get a rabbit. And my uncle said, well, just follow the tracks to a big brush pile somewhere. You know, especially if there's only a few rabbits around, you just follow the tracks. And when you get to the big brush pile or a bunch of tree limbs or someplace where it's hiding, give it a kick and it'll come running out. So that's how I learned to start tracking. And when uh, my, my buddy Tim uh, and I had, had ciphered out the whole rabbit situation and we, we were really getting it down. We, we, we had it so those poor rabbits were really getting a clean in and by the two of us kind of surrounding it and getting them, we started getting good at it. And we said, well, if we ever get this good at, at doing this with deer, Boy, we're really going to be something, right? Well, it turns out a, a deer is the same as a rabbit. It's just only a big rabbit. It's going a long ways, right? But in general, it does about the same. And uh, one day I was walking along and I came to uh, a hillside and I was just walking up it. I had all my whites on and I looked over and here comes a deer right at me. So I just stood there and I watched it and I didn't see any horns. So I just stood there and it kept coming and coming and then I could see horns and it was a spike. He's just doing this grunt every so often. It's so soft and so quiet. And it was all I could do to keep him busting out laughing. It was so interesting. And as he's coming along and he's working his way towards me, he stops at about 25 feet from me and he's now sniffing my tracks. So he uh, suddenly figured out, ooh, there's somebody here. And he reacted, he kind of fluffed up a little bit and he was worried. Then he relaxed and the wind was blowing perfect right at me and he couldn't see me. And then he finished going out around me and then I waved at him at about 25 feet, right? And he, oh my God, and he jumped off, you know, it was pretty neat. And I, uh, later on I went to, and I wonder why he did that. I just didn't seem sensible for a buck to just walk through the woods grunting for no reason. He's not grunting to anybody, he's just grunting. And he's just a little fella, he's a teenager, he doesn't know any better. And he's coming right at me and I'm wondering, well, why is he doing that? Later on I go to Maine and uh, because the other fellas in the group couldn't go out uh, later in the season, they could only get time off in the first week or two um, before Vermont season started when we went to Maine. So we would take a week and go to Maine and go up there deer hunting for a week. And we were always pre you know, early part, the first week or two in November, usually the second week. Well, we get up there and uh, a lot of times a buck would be on top of a buck. A buck would be following another buck. And I'd, I'd find a buck track and he'd lead me to another buck and I'd have two bucks and then they'd dosey -si do and one would follow the other and once in a while they'd get in a fight or push each other off. And I got to thinking how common it must be, especially in the early part of the season while I'm hunting up there and it's pre-rut, how common it would be for me to, to for a buck to have another buck come up behind him. And if I pretend I'm another buck and I come up behind him grunting, um, he's very likely to make a mistake. He might stand there long enough for me to, for me to, you know, he might make a mistake and he stand there long enough for me to get a shot or for me to get a good look at him. I just wanted to see one. It was so hard to see one. So I'm going along and I, I'm working my way closer to him and, and I got to thinking, well, that little buck was wandering through the woods grunting for no reason. And he grunted a lot. I, he grunted every five or six seconds, all by his lonesome. So I got to thinking, if he can do that, why don't I do that? I'll come up behind a buck, especially when he can hear me coming, and maybe he'll hold just a little bit longer and I'll get around the brush, or he'll only jump off and stop, or he'll only go a short ways and look back, or he might hesitate and just stand there and let me walk right up to him. Well, that started working. So I called it the buck game and I started walking up on deer and grunting or getting close to them and calling and then stopping for a long period of time. And if a buck were laying there and he heard grunt, 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 and all kinds of walking and crashing, and then it went dead silent. After a while, he'd have a nervous breakdown. He's got to go see what that was. Is that another buck? Is he chasing my doe? Uh, what's going on? Where did he go? So he'll get up out of his bed and circle around on the downwind side. And next thing I know, the bucks were standing up and then walking around me and I was close to them and now they're moving and I'm not and I catch them and bang and oh, that worked so good. Or I'd see them and shoot at them and jump them and, and uh, grunt to him first and then shoot at him and they knew there was danger They knew that something happened and they thought I was other deer So after I shot him they ran right at me I, That was the perfect thing to do to get deer to come right to you is the, the best possible thing especially after you pulled the trigger It'll help you take care of the rest of it So it was awesome and I started doing that more and more and uh, not too many other people were doing it And the deer had never experienced that before and it works so good. So from now on that's just what I do I, and it's worked so well There's some danger 
dangers to it. If you're in the woods walking along and another guy's in front of you and you make all kinds of racket coming through the brush and you're rattling, you're, you're grunting, you're snort wheezing and you're calling, you could wind another hunter right up. You want to be wearing orange, right? It's almost like turkey hunting and gobbling and running around. You've got to be careful and I want to make sure that I, I wear my orange all the time. We never go out without orange and it's real important. Um, and also too, most of the places we're hunting, we're not running into too many people. This isn't going to be a method you want to do where there's lots of crowds of people. Um, especially too with firearms. That's another chance where, you know, you want to be careful as possible and keep that in mind always. There's no reason to not wear orange. I, even if there's a little bit of movement in the brush, the orange will flash through there. And if you're not wearing orange and you're wearing camouflage and someone sees that movement, they're going to pick their gun up and take a look just to see what's up. I hate people pointing guns at me. I don't like that at all. And I hope you guys all feel the same. So wear your hunter orange. There's no reason not to. The other thing is there's three reasons you wear hunter orange, right? Right? One, everybody can identify you as a person, so they won't shoot you. Number two, if we're looking for you and you fell or you got hurt, you're so much easier to find. Rescue, right? That's the other reason we wear Hunter Orange. And the last reason that most of the people can't ever seem to get, but it's, it, it's one of the reasons that a lot of us should get it, is that when you're wearing Hunter Orange, you're not sneaking around on property you shouldn't be on, right? It keeps you honest. Everyone knows what you're up to, and you'll act more ethically when you're wearing that Hunter Orange. So. Wear your orange. Yeah. It's good for all of us. Good trees when you sound that rock.